Good morning, everybody. It is Kitten Mayhem. They are approaching five weeks old now. Tomorrow will be five weeks. Um, Gus Gus is already five weeks. Um, and as you can see, as Miss Marigold is demonstrating, we are eating solid food. Yay! <laughs> they still have a little bit of trouble crunching. They got their fangs. I don't know if they've got their molars yet. Um, and everybody's wrestling. So that is Hyacinth that Gus Gus is picking on. <laughs> There's Miss Daisy. And Miss Lily's here somewhere. I think I see her up there. There she is. Miss Lily. <laughs> so we've made some kitten chow oatmeal which for those of you that don't know you just take some good old-fashioned kitten chow you put it on a plate and you add just a little bit of warm water and it makes it all kinds of soft and mushy and it's a little easier for them to eat and digest until they get their chomping molars in but from what I'm hearing out of Miss Marigold over there, their chomping molars are in. Because she is crunching away. Probably hear her from over here. So they're drinking water. Um, now we're going to work on litter box training. Because I'm finding little poops everywhere. So I have put one little litter box here. And I have put... Another little litter box there, which you can see somebody did get the hang of it. And there's the big litter box there, which I'm thinking by next week they ought to be tall enough to get in and out of that easily. Um, I put Marigold in it. She's the smallest, and she was able to crawl back out of it. So now that she knows she can get out of it, I'm hoping she'll start using it. And then the other litter box is around, around the bend from the desk. And that's a, a big cat litter box. So I'm hoping between the four in here, we can get them using stuff. Um, in the meantime, they've liked to, for some reason, gone in the playpen, and they go in there. So I put a puppy pad down. If I can at least get them going to the same spot repeatedly. Good job, Daisy. I think she peed. Yeah. So if I can get them going to the same spot... Um, then I can put another litter box there and get them in the habit of using. Um, but as of right now, they've got two big kitty litter boxes and two baby litter boxes. Um, so I'm hoping that'll be enough to get them started. Because I can't really take any more from the rest of the house because all the adults need those. So. What you think, Miss Hyacinth? She's like, I'll just step over everything. What you think, sweetheart? What you trying to do? She's still getting the concept of you can walk around something. You don't have to walk over it. That's taken her a little while to figure out for whatever reason. You gonna have some kitten chow oatmeal? Yeah? You picking on the crumbs first? Yum, yum, yum. Yeah. Have some water. Good job. Good job. Here's Miss Lily. <laughs> See, we're going to get a second water bowl in here now that we know you guys are drinking water. Oop, there's Miss Daisy. That white blur that just came running by. And that's Lily and Hyacinth together. So it looks like Lily is going to be more sleek. And Hyacinth is going to be more of a foofball.
What are you doing, Miss Lily? Uh, Miss uh, Daisy. I can't even keep them straight. Don't pee on my meatloaf and my Def Leppard books, please. I'm going to have to move those. Say, whatever you do, don't mess with my Def Leppard books. Because Def Leppard are my boys. Right? Say, they're our favorite band. So, it's a rainy day today. We had a pretty good thunderstorm last night. What are you doing? You are playing all by yourself. What? What's, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I think it's time to order some more toys, huh? Now you're old enough to really play with them. Gus Gus is playing Conquer the Mountain. You did it, Gus Gus. Good job, buddy. Yeah, definitely time for a second water bowl. <laughs> what are you guys doing in here? What you doing in here? <laughs> are you gonna go potty? Is that your play place or your potty place? You can't have it be both. One or the other. Miss Miss Marigold. <laughs> you guys are silly. You guys are silly. <laughs> See, what are they doing, Miss Marigold? Lily's being silly. There goes Gus Gus. What you got, Gus Gus? And Miss Hyacinth, Hyacinth, can't speak today, is all the way over there playing by herself. I noticed so far out of the group, she's the one that tends to stay more to herself. Um, she entertains herself. She finds something to play with, and she just busies herself with it and when it's time to sleep everybody huddles all together and she goes somewhere a little further away and curls up so she likes her solitude what are you doing Gus Gus you guys are crazy See, we're going to have to set up a kitten cam here just for you guys. Why? That's a microphone. Are you going to sing? No. Are you going to be a singer? You're thinking about it? It's a little plastic toy microphone I had gotten. So they're almost big enough, honestly, that I could put them in the kitten cage. But right now, they're still tiny enough that they'll wiggle right out the bottom. Um, but eventually, if I need to keep them confined while I'm vacuuming or something like that, I'll be able to put them in there. Um, it is not my intention, however, to leave them in there all the time. Because that's not enough space. Um, but at least it's somewhere to put them. When I need to deep clean the carpet while we're litter box training. As long as they once they're big enough that they don't wriggle out the bottom. Um, which they can still do, but soon, probably maybe in two weeks, they'll be big enough to where I can put them in there and they will not wriggle out the bottom.
Right, Miss Daisy? See, it did come in handy, though, because that's the cage we used when we had, uh, Chunk and Willow rehabilitating from their surgery. When they weren't supposed to do a whole lot of leaping. For that first night when I brought them home, they um, I took out the top tiers. So there was only the bottom tier, so he could only leap but so much. Um, and he hung out in that for just the first night. And then after that, he was back to his usual psycho self. Right. Say, that was a good investment. Those kitten cages, they're a little pricey. Um, and they're a total pain in the ass to put together. But once you do have them, they do come in handy. When you have to isolate somebody getting ready for surgery or recovering from surgery. Or if you just have to isolate somebody who's pooping all over the place until they get the hang of it. What you doing? I think she's going to go potty. We won't get that on camera because that's rude. You need to be in the litter box, honey. I don't know if that's what she's doing or not. Okay, Mama, hold on. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's what she's doing or not. I'm going to give her a minute because if she's in the middle of it, I don't want to traumatize her. You hear Mama calling you, Miss Lily? Yeah. You hear Mama calling you? Mama wants very much for you guys to run around the house with her. But that is not happening yet. Not yet. Yeah, we hear you, Mama. Hi, Miss Hyacinth. She's so shy. <laughs> what you doing? You so shy. You so shy. Say, we're also really glad we bought that steam cleaner now, aren't we? Huh. Say, boy, are we going to be using that? Cleaning up after you mugs. Yep. And then after you guys are all adopted, we're going to have to call somebody in to clean the air ducts, if they can be cleaned. I don't know. I shudder to think at the thought that the only way to get rid of the smell from when Chunk and everybody was peeing down them is to just replace the whole damn thing. <sighs> Which would probably cost me a year's salary to do. <laughs> no, not quite that bad. Half a year's salary. Okay, so all I gotta do is save up money for six months and then my house can stop smelling like pee every time the air conditioner. It's not so bad with the air conditioner. It's worse with the heat. Um, but I, I did get some new heat vent grates for the living room. Um, and then I'm gonna use that steam cleaner. Uh, to steam clean at least the opening and try to sanitize what I can reach. Um, and we'll see how bad it is because they were kind of... Nobody was outright emptying their entire bladder down the heat vent. It was when they were marking and spraying. Chunk and Willow were doing a little squirt down the heat vent. <laughs> so... At least it wasn't like anybody was opening their, you know, emptying their bladder down it. But still, it's pretty gross. So, so yeah, we love rescuing these guys. And it's very rewarding and it's very heartwarming. Um, but it does have its drawbacks. You know, you, you keep up on things and you keep it clean. But when stuff like that happens that you can't always control until you know what's happening. When you're by yourself. Um, it can be, it can be a challenge because, uh, 
you know, at this point, I'm afraid to let anybody in my house. I mean, I, I've seen much worse. Don't get me wrong. I have seen people that live in much worse. <laughs> but still, I'm not comfortable even letting, you know, my own family members come here. What you got? <laughs> what are you doing? Say, because even though we keep things relatively clean, there are still 12 litter boxes. And even though we clean them three or four times a day at least, they are still going to be a litter box stink in the air. And opening the windows helps. And air fresheners help, but I have to make sure it's little things like this that they can't chew on or get into or nothing that's going to get in their food or their water or give them upper respiratory issues. So I try to stick to, um, a lot of times, believe it or not, good old fashioned baking soda does it. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Good old fashioned baking soda does it, right guys? Just put out a bowl where they can't get to it to try to eat it, of course. Uh, and just fill it up with good old fashioned baking soda, nothing else. And it'll wind up absorbing a lot of the, um, the stink. It helps, anyway. Um, there's also these puppy pads. Um, I got a sneeze coming. Hang on a second. Okay. Oof. You know how it is when you stifle a sneeze and you feel like your eyes are going to pop out of your head? <laughs> so, yeah. I don't have nice little dainty girl sneezes, which is why I stifle it if I'm recording, because, um, yeah. Other girls I know have these cute little girl feminine sneezes. When I sneeze, it's like a Category 4 hurricane. You know, I'm like, it's loud and it's gale force winds. And, you know, I am not a dainty sneezer. So I try to stifle it. And when I do stifle it, I feel like my eyes are going to pop out of my head. <laughs> so, it's like all I can think of is a Bugs Bunny cartoon when that kind of stuff happens. Um, but anyway, what was I talking about? I haven't really had coffee yet. And I'm babbling. Oh, the stank. That's right. right. So the stank, um, I found that these um, puppy pads that have charcoal in them, um, they also help. Even just putting one out. And I use them for more things than just poop and pee. I use them, obviously, like you see there, because they're learning how to drink water. So they're wearing it more than they're drinking it. <laughs> um, and... Uh, it helps absorb the spills so the carpet doesn't get so nasty. Um, but even something, either charcoal or plain old baking soda, seems to do wonders with the stink. Um, and it could be a lot worse. I mean, the few people I have had in here are surprised that I have that many cats. Like, they smell cat. You know, they know I have animals, but they're like, it does not smell like 12 cats in here. So I'm like, okay, well, that's good. I'd like to keep it that way. I'd like it to not smell like any cats if I can help it, but that's kind of impossible. Right. Are you going to get my foot? Say, I apologize for my fat little foot sticking out. My little hobbit feet, except for the hair. Yeah. Yes, Mama, I hear you, but I know what Mama wants. I'm going to open the door and she's going to sit there and look at me. Because she wants them to come out. And they are a little too little yet. And another week or two, we'll start opening the door and let them run amok for a few hours a day. But right now, not yet. And I gotta drag out the old barriers that I had from uh, before. Where are you guys? I'm sitting here babbling. I don't even have you guys in view. Um, I have these little barriers and borders and things that uh, I had from last year, when the last round of kittens was here. Um, and they come in pretty handy. It's like a plastic wall. Um, and you put it together with like these plastic connectors. And it kind of makes it so that the kittens can't really get out as easily. <laughs> um, of course, anybody who's ever had kittens knows that the only way to contain a kitten is to put it behind a closed door or and uh you know 
little playpen like that when everything zips shut or if they're big enough in a cage like that. Um, there's no such thing as putting up something that they won't climb over because they will. Um, so the, the one barrier in particular, the only thing that goes in our favor with it is the walls are smooth. So it's not as easy for them to scale it. Oh, look what Miss Hyacinth just discovered. She's like, wait a minute. That ball goes around. <laughs> oh boy. What did you just figure out? <laughs> They've put a jingle ball in there, too. Mama must have done that. Because I didn't do that, so Mama or one of the others must have done it. What I'm hoping to do, I have another camera, um, but I don't know how good it is. It was something I got on sale years ago. There was a while back that um, I had thought I was going to try my uh, hand at doing actual like ASMR videos. I did a couple of them, and they turned out okay. Um, but... It was really just an excuse to play with costumes, because at heart, I am a kid on Halloween, like every day of the year. <laughs> so, any excuse or chance I get to dress up in a silly costume, or a nice costume, one way or the other, um, I will jump at it. It's also the only time I will wear makeup. Here comes Miss Marigold. She's going to get you. I have great admiration for people that can put on makeup every day. And look really good. Because I can't stand it. I can do it for like Halloween. Or I can do it for a few hours. You know to shoot a video. Or do something fun. But to, to do it every day all day. I don't know how you do it. Because mm mm. I'm like, no, that's okay. Especially because I have a lot of allergies. So at some point in the day, I always wind up rubbing my eyes or my face. So, you know, probably if I wore makeup every day, by the end of the workday, my face would look like some kind of Picasso painting. I'd have shit smeared all over the place. <laughs> See, it's just not me, right? It's not who I am. Oh, here comes Miss Daisy. Miss Daisy gonna get you. She gonna get you, Gus Gus. <laughs> but who else is in there? That's Lily. Lily's in the house. Hyacinth is. And I was able to get another sneak peek. And you know, for if you guys have been following me, the ones that have been following me for last year too, they always laugh at me because they know. Um, I am absolutely horrible at telling who's boy and who's girl until they're like much older. Because um, to me it all looks the same. Until they're older and it looks very different. You know, right at that, when they're this little, you know. But now it's getting to the point where it will start to look very different soon. Um, and from what I am seeing so far, it looks like there are four girls and one boy. Um, Gus Gus has a lot of hair, but I'm pretty sure that's a boy under all that. Um, Daisy also has a lot of hair, but I'm pretty sure that's a girl under all that. I'm glad to see Miss Hyacinth running around. Sometimes she's so quiet I worry about her. <laughs> I 
I saw Miss Hyathan starting to step in the litter box. So I'm hoping that they get it. If I find a poop on the floor, if it's not, not to be graphic or anything, TMI. Warning for anybody eating breakfast or something. Um, but if I do find one on the floor that's not too messy, I do put it in the litter box. So that they know, you know, that's where you go. Um, and I leave it there for a little while. So they get the hang of it. And then when I see them after I clean the litter box, I'll put one of them in it. They'll take turns going in it and I move their paws around so they understand that they can dig and bury. And I'm hoping their um, instinct will kind of sort of take over. I think right now they're a little bit too tiny. They're close though. Because like I know, I see... um. I think that's Daisy and Hyacinth, and it looks like they're climbing in and out of the big kitty litter box. So I'm waiting to hear if I hear any scratching, but I know they're at least... They're jumping in it, which is good, because that's where Mama does her stuff, so... They'll get the idea that... When you got to go potty, that is where you go. And not all over the carpets. Because we can't have that again. <laughs> so the bonging you're hearing from under the cage is Gus Gus. One of his favorite things to do is squish himself down and he goes underneath the cage. And then if... Any of the girls, you see Daisy there right by the edge of the cage sticking her head out. Um, he hides from under it, and when they come by, he jumps out and grabs them. That's his best game ever. Yeah. Best game ever. Okay, guys. Well, that's it. I guess the play session is winding down now. And I have babbled and bored you long enough. Looks like Miss Marigold is starting to fall asleep. <laughs> What's the matter, Miss Marigold? She's drifting off. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's Gus Gus. He's going to get you. You know what he's going to do. This is what he does. He's going to get you. He'll wait and then he'll jump out from under that and scare everybody. There was one time I was waiting for him to do it and he got, I guess, tired waiting for them to come out. So he could scare them and he fell asleep under there. <laughs> He scared the hell out of me because I was looking all over the place because I couldn't find him. And then I heard the cage move, the, the sound of the cage underneath. So I was like, Gus, Gus, is that you? And he popped his little head out. Say, he fell asleep waiting to scare his sisters. Marigold is down for the count. She's like, peace out, I'm done. <sighs> okay, so I don't even know if I stopped in mid-sentence. I have no idea what I was saying. It's I had a long night. <laughs> I was up a lot during the night last night. Just wasn't feeling the greatest. So, um, between lack of sleep and lack of caffeine, I'm not even sure if anything I've said during this video makes sense. Here's hoping it did so I can post it. Um, I, 
think I was talking about? Oh, the camera. I think that was where I left off before I went into the Twilight Zone. Um, that I do have an actual camera. Because all of these videos I just film with my phone because it's easier. Um, I do have an actual camera, but it's not like a name brand or anything. It was just like, you know, an Amazon special that was on sale. Um, that I picked up. And I might use that. See if I can get nicer footage. Um, but I don't know how good the microphone and all that stuff is on it, so, um, we'll have to wait and see. But I, I had bought it back when I had the idea that I was going to record, um, like, roleplay ASMR videos. Um, and use some of my Halloween costumes and stuff and makeup stories and, and that kind of thing. Um, but with my work... It gets crazy. It used to be I work for a flower company. And it used to be that we had like an on-season and an off-season. And the off-season was during the summertime. So I really thought that I was going to make a whole bunch of videos. And I did two of them. And they came out pretty good. Um, but they were not easy to make. You know, like, not that the people that do those videos, not that it looks easy, but... It doesn't look as difficult <laughs> as it actually is. Um, and I don't even have access to all the fancy graphic programs and everything that they use when they're editing. Um, and I don't have the fancy microphones, you know, to make everything sound extra better, you know, extra close and uh, extra sensitive to sound. What you doing, Miss Lily? Um, but I still had my fun doing it. It was part of a collaboration with a bunch of other um, young artists, I guess you could call it. We were The people I worked with were better than amateurs, but they weren't super famous yet. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I actually had a really good time doing it. Um, but it was very tiring with all the editing and putting it together and then... You think everything is good, and then you try to export it, and then I was using Adobe Premiere, um, and then it didn't like something that was in it, you know, and then I had to do all kinds of tutorials to teach myself how to use it, because when I first saw it, I was completely intimidated by it, and I was like, this is crazy, I'm never going to understand this, and then after watching a couple of videos about how to do it, I was like, hmm. Okay, so it's just, everything is kind of in a layer, that's all. You've got, like, you with the background you choose, and then if you have, like, a green screen or something, you can replace the background. And then you've got your recording of your voice, and you can change that and put a background sound behind it, you know, and if you want to do a little visual effect where you want to make it look like you've got smoke around you or you disappear, or it's making one level of the vision, you know, the, the video part, the visual part fade in while the other one fades out, you know, kind of a thing. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, but I am not doing it nearly as often as I thought I would. I made like two videos and that was it. <laughs> and I had all these plans and all these scripts that I started writing. Um, and where I work is not much seasonal anymore. The company has gotten so big. We used to have basically the whole summer. Um, you still had work to do, but it was much more relaxed. Um, and then when it would come around in the fall and you'd gear up for um, Thanksgiving, you know, Christmas, then it was work like the hammers of hell until Mother's Day. Um, but now the company's gotten so big, there's not really an off season anymore. Because by the time you finish selling for Mother's Day, you've got dormant flower bulbs and stuff that are coming in, um, ready to be grown to start for the next upcoming season. You know, so it used to be we didn't have that many. Um, and so we had like at least June, July, and August to relax. Um, but now it's like, no, you're, you get about two weeks <laughs> after Mother's Day is over, you know, everybody does inventory and then you breathe for about two weeks 
And then after Memorial Day, everything starts to start all over again. And you got to do the prep and the, all the stuff that goes with it. And it's, it's very tiring. At least what I do is not physically demanding. Um, I am basically, for want of better explanation, I'm the bookkeeper, basically. Um, so I take care of a lot of office stuff. I do a lot of um, bookkeeping things and secretary type things. And, and now I finally have help. I used to be the receptionist too. Um, and it just got to be too much. The volume, the sheer volume of what was coming in. Every week I would have stacks of invoices that were, you know, eight inches high of paperwork. And that was like every four or five days. And it was trying to process all of that and talk on the phone to answer people and talk to the people coming in and run around and help everybody else and keep track of all the office supplies and order things as needed and be the assistant to, you know, the purchaser or the you know production planner if they needed something, you know, and then on top of all of that, I would have the big boss you know, calling for help to arrange travel and shows. And it was just, it got to be way too much. So I was like, okay, dudes, you know, you got to help me out here. Um, I'm going to need some, some assistance. So now I have some help in the office, which is wonderful. So that's made things loads better than it was. But I still don't have the extra time after I'm done taking care of all of these mugs. Um... To sit down and play dress up and tell stories. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe I'll go back to doing that again after everybody is grown and adopted. Because um, uh, once they stop nursing, um, I've got to make it a priority to get Maggie and Austin in to get spayed. So this doesn't happen again. Because as much as it's fun and as much as they're cute, it's very expensive. And it's a lot of work. And I love them, but there's just too many of them now. For one person, there's just too many of them. It's getting difficult for me to keep up. Um, and I uh, definitely don't want anybody to be in jeopardy of not being cared for properly. Um, so at this point in time, I'm able to keep everybody healthy and clean and fed and and stuff, but I don't think I could take on any more than what I've got, because this is about the limit of what I can handle. Um, but it's still been fun, and I still love them, and I hope they all get good homes when they're ready. That's the hardest part, is when it's time for them to go, letting them go. But it is a necessity, because I can't keep everybody. My house is not big enough. And I was looking online at housing, and I was like, well, maybe I can sell this house and buy a bigger house. But the prices are crazy. Like, one little woman can't buy a huge house and do all of this all by herself. Not right now. Maybe someday. But not right now. See, we've got pretty decent equity in the house now, but... We're going to have to do a lot to it before we can actually sell it, if we choose to. Or we're going to have to sell it for a lot less than what it's worth that everybody can do. Because after all the cats, it's not only going to need the walls repaired and the whole place will need to be repainted, but the carpets will have to be torn up everywhere and have new flooring put down. Um, the heating and cooling system is about 10 years old now which means that's going to start to get to the point where it's going to need to be replaced which I'm not looking forward to because that costs a freaking arm and a leg so I'm like yeah I don't know I could probably get away with not replacing the heating cooling system but I would definitely have to replace the floors um and possibly either replace the air ducts to the house or um, 
see if there's a company that can, like, clean and sanitize them instead of just sucking out the dust and stuff from them. You know, it would need to be cleaned and sanitized. Uh, but I'm hoping I can kind of sort of do that myself because it's just the, the first part right under the grate. I don't think too much of it went, like, down, down into the tubing. So, I don't know. I'll have to see. We'll have to see. But... Uh, well, it looks like everybody has gone to sleep, and I've probably bored you people to sleep by now, too. So, I will check in with you guys some other time. I hope you had a good week, and I hope that uh, you have a good coming week. So, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.